Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Albers, and welcome to This Week in Anderson. We are uh, here with my co-host, Steve Ellis, as always, and we have a very special guest with us tonight. He's a 1986 class with uh, Steve and I uh, from Anderson High School, former Anderson High School uh, soccer coach in Anderson and the winningest soccer coach in Anderson High School. Yep. Also in the Hall of Fame and happens to be the AD at UC Claremont, Brian Sullivan. Brian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I'm, I'm kind of waiting what the punchline is here because I, underst <laughs> I understand I'm filling in for Dan Varner and I'm following Chris Newton. So I'm, some, there's a setup here somewhere. Well, Newt, Newt, did, pay, Newt did pay us some money. So, uh, you know, yeah, we yeah, paid Two of the most likable guys in Anderson Township, and so I'm, I'm in between them. I'm, so that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, Brian, uh, you know, it's been kind of a uh, – we, we kind of talked with Newt about it being the AD at Anderson, and you're the AD at UC Claremont. Talk a little bit about how, how that transition for you with this COVID-19 going on and how you've adapted and, and what you've had to do. Well, it, uh, as, as it was with everybody, March 13th, they called us in and said – you're not coming back. And so that was the end of, then we had to scatter to, to uh, cancel all our spring sports, which everyone knew was going to be canceled, but we had to officially let the players know and get, get them together and get the equipment back and start then. And ever since then, I'll be honest, we, we have, I bet you we have five or six plans right now of what may happen depending on our opponents, our affiliation with the USCAA. So we're, we're kind of at a wait and see. I mean, again, I have four or five plans it's just a matter of wait and see. Hopefully something, I've been told July 1st is a magic date for a lot of things. So I'm hoping it's at least before that or, or right around that time frame. How hard has that been working from home? Um, it, it has, it, it's been hard just to be, I like being around people. That's why I do what I do. I love being around the kids and, and my coworkers and being in the gym and that's been very difficult. And, but uh, as far as communicating with everybody, it's, it's odd. I used to, you know, you send an email and you may not hear back for three or four days. Now you're hearing back in 10 minutes because we're all in the same boat. Right. So. Is that, that is that, has that been really hard uh, trying to express to the coaches, you know, you know, I'm sure they're impatient just as well as you are to, to try to just hang in. I mean, I'm sure that's got to be really, really difficult for you as, a, as an AD. Yeah. I speak to the coaches at least once a week, if not more, especially the fall coaches that are coming up and just trying to stay positive and, to, to everything we're doing is for the best interest of, of, of them and the players and nothing, there's going to be nothing, everything's going to be transparent. There's going to be no secrets. Nothing's going to come out of the blue. And so they're pretty, they're pretty on top of it. And they've been pretty, they've been very cooperative, but uh, as, as the weeks go on, you can tell their patients are wearing a little thin on just, they want to get started. They're competitive. Like we all are. They want to get going. What, what's your gut, what's your gut feeling? I mean, just now, I mean, do you, do you, do you feel, I mean, I, I thought I saw from uh, Dr. Pinto that the, the main campus is going to come back uh, in the fall. Do you, do you feel like that's going to be the same thing with you? Yeah, I really believe so. The people I've spoken to, we're going we're gonna to be back now. It's going to look a lot different in any class, from what I understand, any class that can be done professionally online will be, will be done online to keep it limited. But the labs and police academy and uh, the uh, uh, sporties, the flight school and stuff, who, the people who, who need to be there, uh, they're, they're going to, I think they're going to be on campus in the fall. Yes. Brian, let's, let's take you back a little bit back to, you know, we all graduated together from Anderson, but let's talk about your playing days and, and playing <laughs> soccer and, you know, some of the thoughts you have about back then and who your coach was and what kind of teams you played on. Cause you played on some darn good teams then. Yeah. Our, our senior, our senior year, we had, we had a loaded team. Um, Jack Hermans was the coach. Uh, Joe Moon was the assistant coach. Who's now going right. to be the new assistant yeah. basketball coach at Anderson. I, I'm so excited about that. He's been a, he was a coach, a, a friend and a mentor for, for all of us for quite a few yep. years. So I'm so glad to see him coming back. Um, but we had a really good team that year. Just it, it was soccer was different back then. 1980. We were a bunch of athletes. And we had Tony Nazar, for the most part, there were some soccer players, but there was a lot of athletes with Rob McClellan and Tony Nazarene. And right. you know, those guys were just big and physical or, or fast as lightning. So yeah. it was a little different back then, but we had, we had a great team. I remember we lost to uh, Centerville um, one to nothing. That was, they were the number one team in the state and they had won state championship three yeah. years in a row. So that, I remember that as being a highlight that year, even though we lost and then, um, 
of course, our loss, uh, the final loss was to Turpin. <laughs> we don't like to talk about that too much. We don't talk about that. <laughs> that was, but that, was that ended those, it. And I'll never forget where I was and what the time on the clock was that <laughs> night. And <laughs> but those were some epic battles. I mean, you know, with St. X and, you know, I oh. remember going to those games and, you know, the mm -hmm. stands were, you know, just about as full as they were for football games. And it was just incredible. Yeah, we, we actually would move games down to Brown Stadium. We, we used the soccer stadium up top. But we right. were games to Brown Stadium just for the crowds. And, yeah, I remember we played – St. X was our big – our the it was one and two in the city type thing. But, um, but I remember – and they had – I'll never forget the time we played them for the city championship. There was – out of the 22 guys that started on that soccer game, 18 of them were from Anderson Township. Unbelievable. <laughs> so they were friends. They were all friends. We knew them. Right. They, they just went to St. X. Well, yeah. I, you know what? I, I have to say that I believe Steve and I might have been at that St. X game and we might have had our faces painted, maybe. It, you might have been in the front row. You know, well, yeah. I have a picture of that. So I, do, <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. uh -oh. I do have a picture of that, yes. That's trouble. It was a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yes, I, it was hot, too, I believe. <laughs> I think it was pretty hot, too, as well. Speaking of Saturday afternoons, is anything you want to bring up after all these years, Danny, about uh, – Sully's driveway or anything? Yeah, I, I, if I remember right, I, I thought that I pretty much dominated until I got too tired, and then I had to pull off to the side for a little bit because I was cramping up. But uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. That was that some was some three on three on the driveway in the rain and everything. Oh my, yeah, for for such a, it was a little court, you know. With, but we had lights. That was a key back then. We had lights. Um, I, I remember I entered it in the in the um, when you played in the Gus Macker, you filled out like a survey survey, and it was a favorite favorite court name and of course it was a Sully Dome and that won, <laughs> that won the favorite court name that year so we had some oh, I was just telling nice. my son he, he plays a lot of 21 with his buddies and stuff and I, I remember playing back in the day and we literally one time we knocked the air conditioned unit off the pad yeah oh <laughs> so my there God. Some epic battles there wow yes. wow so so let's move on a little bit to your coaching career Anderson so as Danny said um, uh, you're, you're the all-time winningest soccer coach there in Anderson history. You're in the Hall of Fame. Uh, talk a little bit about how that all started and, and, and you know, some of the teams and players you had for all those years that you coached there and had all the success you had. Yeah, I, I, in my only first and only college scrimmage, I injured my hip, and I was kind of done with it. So I got into coaching – and I was Jack Herman's uh, assistant coach. I did camps with him in the summer, so I was his JV coach. He uh, he was let go the following year over some academic stuff, and um, I had no intentions. I was 19 years old. I had no intentions of applying, and I remember, never forget, there was a parents' meeting. They had a big parents' meeting, and um, Mike Hall called me the next day and asked if I would be interested in just taking the job over. So, and my brother was on the team. He was going to be a senior on that team all the guys that I grew up with, you know, the families, we, all the families knew each other. And, and uh, of course I wasn't going to turn it down. <laughs> I was going to give it a shot. H didn't know what the repercussions would have been if things would have went sour. Um, well, they were good. Please. They were good. Well, it turned out to be great, but I, I never thought of the repercussions of what may happen if, you know, cause I've never lived anywhere other than Anderson township. This is, this is my home. And, and uh, I, I got, I got a group of guys that, um, were I think there was five Division One players on that team ended up being Division One players. Wow! And 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 as I've said many times, I mean, I I kind of I set some rules. I didn't didn't go too far, but I set some rules and and kind of let them let them play. And it turned out we went undefeated that season. We were number one in the state. Um, and then it just seemed like I hit a, I hit a time at Anderson, which soccer's always been good at Anderson, but I hit a time particularly where. I had a great group of guys. Then a, a year or two later, I would get their brother. So a lot of the same families, a lot of the same things, and, and we just had great success. Yeah. yeah. How hard was but, that? How hard was that coaching your brother? It it was it was in, again, and I, I as I said I as I've said many times publicly, th they could have that group could have ended my career if yeah. they would have jacked around and kind of done what they wanted to do, but they didn't. They they we we respected each other. And, and we just, again, we, we kind of went through the whole thing together because then with the, with the success came the, the media coverage. And so every, we just kind of went through everything together and it, it turned out to be great. It was the best experience of my life. So if, if I'm not mistaken, I think you were the 
youngest coach in Ohio high school history to get reach a hundred wins. Yes, as a, quickest. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's it. That's incredible, Brian. And I was the young, I'm the youngest coach. I don't know if it still stands now, but at the time, the youngest coach I was hired, youngest varsity coach at 19 years old. Wow. So I don't know <laughs> if that still stands. I'm sure. I'm sure it has to be <laughs> younger and younger. I would think it, was yeah. <laughs> it can't be too much more because we were what I started in the season of 88 that turned into, well, no, the 80, yeah, 89 graduation class. So 88 school year. Yeah. We graduated in 86. So unless someone comes right out and takes a varsity job out of high school, then <laughs> that's not. That's not going to happen. And so, and, and as a coach, you know, being on the sideline, even on those epic battles of the, you know, Bartles Road and St. X and Centerville, you know, how much different was that for you being on the sideline? Oh, well, I don't think much different at all because I, I had so, I think I was just as fired up for those games as any of the players were. I mean, I, I was just, I got to live my high school career just over and over and over every season. Cause I mean, I'm at my alma mater. I couldn't be more proud to be there. It was like, I, I you know, I was a senior for 20 straight years. <laughs> That's so, right. And you have the same rivals. You think the same thing about your same rivals. Sure. Um, you try and do what's best. You couldn't be more proud of the team. So you try to do whatever you could for those kids and let them have an experience like we had. You coached some unbelievable players over the years besides that first year with all that D1 talent, but you, you had some unbelievable soccer players throughout your years there, didn't you? Yeah, I had, gosh, there's so many that I, uh, Wayne Lobring, he went on to play at Indiana. He was an All-American. He was the Gatorade National Player of the Year. Wow. In high school, so you can't get much better than that. Right. Brent Rosser, yeah. uh, I remember yeah. Brent Rosser was there. there. There's so many that went on in, in, in probably have not got the recognition that they deserve because they played with so many great players. Yeah. And, and not so many people know that about the history of, of playing on the upper field by the baseball field, which was, I think it was called Forest Hill Stadium. Because yeah, it was still shared, soccer stadium, yeah. It was shared at the time by Anderson Turpin and McNick. Yes. Yeah. Turpin and McNick didn't have soccer fields and it was grass and, you know, they had to, Huge bleachers there, and I just great atmosphere. Teams there. Oh, it was great. In fact, when I, I you know, I coached the first my first stint, and then I was gone for a few years, and um, an opening came back, and I reapplied for it the second time and got it. So I did another stint of six years, and so so of course by the time I left and the time I came back, Anderson had gotten the turf, and um, I remember Pam Scott, you know, wanted me to fill out a schedule to work with the football team for practices down on the turf. And I said, well, I have no need for that turf. We're going to go up into grass. And th that lasted about two minutes. You know, the kids wanted no part of They had no idea why I would want to go play on the grass at that time. <laughs> I was all ready to go back to the stadium. I thought that was, that was, well, at the time it was the best field in Cincinnati the way they kept it. Right. And yeah. The size of it and the atmosphere of it, people standing around the fence. It was just oh, a great atmosphere. I remember that on Forest Road there, they were lining up along the fence. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you, and if you go back and you think about the history, that's actually where the uh, football field used to be originally before Brown Stadium was built. So oh, that right. was, yeah, that was the old football field where they played uh, their, their games at. Okay. Yeah. Is, is, that where the, is that where the Anderson Middle School games were too? Yes. Yes. Yep. Right up there. On that okay. Dang. All right, Brian. So, uh, you know, now that you, you, you come full circle around and you, you, you go and talk a little bit after, after you know, the coaching at Anderson and how you got to, to, to your UC Claremont and being the UC uh, AD. Well, okay. Um, they kind of overlapped a little bit with each other, but uh, uh, UC Claremont had never really had an athletic director, Phil Sinkovich, which another Anderson Township guy um, that, that we all know really well. He, uh, he had started the athletic program at UC Claremont, but they never really had a need for an athletic director and they were going to try and grow it. And they figured, well, if we're going to try it, let's, let's, get an athletic director in here and try to really go the, grow the athletic program. So uh, they gave me a shot at it and I've been there. I'm going to be entering my 15th year. Wow. And we've won uh, our five national championships and grown the sports. We've added men and women's soccer and baseball since I've been there. Um, and women's soccer have won two national championships and baseball has won a world series. So um, Great. it's just, again, it's just, right place at the right time and, and had a bunch of good people around me. 
and you've got one of them right here with you on this uh, broadcast that was a uh, coach of the coach of the year. So yes, uh, pretty, exactly. pretty special. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, obviously and Steve, we can go on forever about that, but that's, it, it, that's been a, a hire that, that we had talked about for a long time. And, and yep. I never dream I never dreamed we'd have the opportunity to get him to get him there as well. He was doing as well as he was doing in high school. And I'm so glad he, he took that chance and, and it's, it's working out great. Absolutely. Fun. Too. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, um, Brian, tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you say you're involved in Anderson all your life and everything like that. Well, tell us a little bit about your, your wife, Debbie, who's a school teacher in the district and your, your son, Alex and, and Megan, who have gone through Anderson. Yeah, I've had, um, I, oh, well, we're going to be celebrating, my wife and I are celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary on the 24th of this month. And I remember Hi. I have Great. pictures of you guys at the wedding as well. So yes. <laughs> That was a long, 25 years. Yeah, yes, sir. But uh, so she's a West Side girl, and I was able to get her over here on the East Side. And nice. uh, she's been teaching at Sherwood for 25 years or 23 years now, Sherwood Elementary in first grade. And we have two kids, Alex, which is going to be a junior at UC in engineering, wow. believe it or not. Wow. And nope. Megan, which is going to be a sophomore at NKU. And they both went to Anderson. They both participated in athletics. And, and yeah, again, we – I couldn't, I can't imagine living anywhere else in Anderson Township. Yeah. I'm sure they had great experiences going through just like all of us. And Oh yeah. yeah. They were the, they were, I'm, they were, used to be the ball boy and ball girl at my games when they were yes. really tiny, when I was coaching and then they came up and uh, Alex never played soccer, but he played baseball and basketball at Anderson and Megan yep. basketball and track and, uh, and soccer as well. So yep. they, they, they made them as well. Yeah, and Megan is now at NKU playing, playing and running track. Yeah, that's you know, you know that that awesome. that's the thing that makes everything so neat and special, especially with you know the both of us, you know, with being friends and and you know the people that we've talked to. That there's a special thing about Anderson. Um, you know, we've all grown up in the area. We play. We still remain friends, and and a lot of the people that we've talked to are still friends, and it just. Yeah, I mean, it, even out at a high school, we were all playing softball together. Um, yeah. And it just how great of a, a, a community Anderson is. And, and I think not, not only just for us, but we, we are excited when people from the, the Anderson area do well. And I think it's just says it for, you know, what your friendship, both you guys mean to me. And I think and it means to everybody else, you know, when you, when, when you live in Anderson, it's pretty much a, a pretty good bond, isn't it? Oh, yeah. absolutely. We, we've all, we've all, done things outside the community, went to school or, or, you know, whatever we've done outside the community in our jobs and stuff, but it, you always come back to Anderson and you always have this, there's, there's guys in our group that I'll see at a Claremont game that I haven't seen for three or four years. And you just, you never miss a beat. You just go right back on to talking what you were talking about four <laughs> years ago. Yeah. That's what makes it so fun. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. So Brian, let's uh, let's uh, try to get into a, a couple of things that we kind of talked about before we went on air. Is uh, we we try to try to get everybody to talk about one of their you know their, some of their favorite moments. You know, uh, one as as a player, uh, one as a coach, and then maybe one just as maybe a favorite memory growing up at Anderson. So if you got any of those memories, just share it with the people out there. As a, as a player, I, I would you know, I would have to say. There's, I don't know if there's a specific time, but I, I so, so much. I mean, back in the day, we used to play Turpin twice in the league, and then we had St. X there, and we had so much talent, and we were we were all we all knew each other, we were all friends still, and so th those kind of memories will never go away. The compet, I mean, I can tell you the the weather, what the picture <laughs> was, and the smell of the grass, and, and stuff like that. That that nice. that happened. That, that's how much it meant to me back then, and I can still tell you that you know, 40 some years ago. <laughs> um, yeah. So th those are memories as coaching. I mean, again, there's so many, so many memories, I, I guess when we beat St. X uh, for the district championship uh, in with about a minute and a half to go, we scored on a, on a head ball with a minute, about a minute and a half to go. And that was, a, that was one of those things where they were the, number nice. one, then we were the number two that year. And uh, we went on, we lost in the regional finals that year, but we went on to, to win a few more games in the state tournament. And that had to be, that was a very exciting moment for the, myself and the guys. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and then uh, growing up, I mean, as we all, we, we were all, we were all friends. We all had our neighborhood friends that we'd get on a bike, get on our bikes in the morning and tell our parents we'll, we'll be back later. And, <laughs> and we go and, and I, I, I'm sure all the schools had the summer playgrounds yeah. back in the day when they, they would open up the, the schools and you would have a teacher yeah. that, that would come and sit and when we did, there'd be volleyball games and that's right. Different games going on. And, and I mean, nobody missed summer playground. You just, when it came time, the bikes were just flocking up to, to I, mine was at Maddox and we'd all go to Maddox summer playground and, and just play our hearts out and then, you know, go get home for dinner and start over again the next day. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. You know, th those are just awesome memories. And Steve, so I'll, I'll ask you since we've still got a, some time here is, you know, all, between all of us, what, what, what's, what's a memory that maybe that you might, something that we all did together. Is there anything that sticks out with you that for all of us that, that, that comes to mind? I mean, I, you know, I mean, the one thing I always, I remember is, is playing softball together. Like we yeah, talked about earlier. that's you know, what I was going to bring up with the softball because, you know, I mean, obviously there's different age, you know, brackets that we could talk about, whether we're, you know, teenagers in high school and what we did and, um, you know, but in the twenties when we were all able to, still hang out together, you know, and, and bond and, you know, and go to, to each other's weddings and, yeah. you know, and just be a part of each other's lives. It's, it's, it's such a cool thing. Yeah. The old Blarney stone, baby. Yeah. The, the, Blarney that, stone. that was part of our life. Yeah. We would, right. we were religious about playing the yeah. softball games. Well, and, 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 and our bills uh, pay, you know, when we go to Blarney stone, our, our, our tabs were pretty hefty too, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. We, we kept them in business. That's Supporting the sponsor, for sure. <laughs> they made money on that deal. You know. The other thing I, too, remember is that when we first started playing, my brother Moose and uh, Ty Burdick weren't as big as they were, as they ended up being in ended softball. Up, right. And they kind of started with, not started with us, but played with us. And, and just to watch them, you know, go Moose. on and play. And then they'd come and watch us and how cool that was to, to be a part of. And, again, there you go back to all the Anderson stuff, you know all the guys kind of sticking together and, and watching and, and cheering and all that. So it was really cool when we were playing I, softball. Yeah. You know, with, with, I remember one, I'm sure you do when we were playing down at uh, township tavern, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. a championship game of some type. And you know, you could only, we were in, must've been in the C league or something. You could only have so many home runs. And I remember you threw this just lollipop to this guy and he crushed it and you were going crazy celebrating because <laughs> it was an out. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that won Go the ahead. game for us. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I, he could not resist. <laughs> so, so they say so they, that's how good of a pitcher I was. I knew my hitters. I studied well, you, my you hitters. Knew. You knew he was. And out I knew of that run. he was going to hit a home run. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like he, I gave it he, up. Crushed. he crushed it. Yeah. Hey, 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 Brian. Just you know, be as honest as you can here. Just, what's your personal thoughts on Danny's beard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm. I'm. If I see, I'm seeing a little gray. Is that true? I have seen that. And there's food in here too. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, try out for big time wrestling or something. Yeah. Well, that's going to have to be cleaned up before basketball season. It, it, it'll okay. it'll be because by that time the coronavirus will be over. I, this was my oh. Corona beard. Um, I could not grow the hair on the head, so I, I had to shave <laughs> the head. We may be relying on USBN Sports quite a bit this year. If fans aren't allowed in the gym, and oh yeah, you yeah, might that you is... might be the, the fans only opportunity to watch. Well, that, that'll be that'll be life. big because yeah. we had uh, quite a bit of people that uh, I know enjoyed uh, watching. I don't know if they enjoyed me screaming and yelling as much as I did. I get a little too crazy, but uh, I think they good. did. I think they did love uh, hearing the uh, stomping of the foot every once in a while. Uh, well, and and I, I think, think that kind of sums up everything. We talk about our friendships, and not only with us three, but I mean everybody. Uh, you mean you, the group can expand as long as far as you want, but I think everybody wears their passion on their sleeves, and. Yeah. And everybody has that same excitement. I mean, I, I'm as excited watching you get excited at the basketball <laughs> games for you and Steve yep. than I am for you. It's amazing. So, yeah. and I, we've never lost that. Thank God. And 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 that's right. what, that's what's great about it. I mean, I I, I tune in into Anderson football. Just I, I don't I don't need to be there. I can listen, and it's just, it's like it's I am. It's the there. same thing. Yep. Yeah, hey, and, and throwing another guy around the circle is, is Tommy Benassi, who does the games with us, another guy that we hung out with, and he's another Very Anderson nice. guy, and, you know, and he, he loves doing it too, and he gets just as excited. And, you know, you know what's funny is just, like you said, we wear our hearts on our sleeves, and 
I mean, there's been a couple of times, like when we beat Villa, when Steve beat Villa Maria, I almost cried. I mean, I was, I was tearing up and Tommy was, Tommy was crying. I mean, that's how much we, you know, care about our friendship with everybody. Yep. And, and, and it's just really cool that, and it, it, but it's, then when I get done, I'm like, I can't believe I was crying. You know, it's like at a bit, you know, it's like that, 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 that episode of, uh, what is it? There's no crying in baseball, you know? Well, Danny, everybody that knows you is not surprised by that. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Brian, I just want to say before we get off here, I you know, let you know how much Danny and I value your friendship and just in all of what you were able to accomplish as a, not just a player, but as a coach and being in the Anderson Hall of Fame is so cool and well-deserved on your part. And so I appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys, you guys know how I feel about you guys as well. So um, hope it continues for a long time. Yeah, That's I'm great. sure it will guys. It's been uh, just a great time again here today. Yeah. And uh, Brian, I'll, I'll slide you some money later. Okay. Um, <laughs> give you that money. But, uh, but no, again, it, you just, uh, thanks. Thanks for helping us out. And uh, it's been, been a great time. Well, and thank hopefully you, yeah. we get some more, get some more people on here. So Steve, again, thanks buddy for, yep. for doing this. And uh, great job, Dan. All right, so for Steve Ellis, Dan Alberts, and Brian Slaubin, you've been watching This Week in Anderson. We'll catch you next week.